Now we're going to do a proof. Um, and it says paragraph proof. I'm going to actually do a two column proof for this. So let's um, set up our two columns and our statements and our reasons. And then let's um, label our picture accordingly. So our given is segment SQ is the perpendicular bisector of PR. So if it's the perpendicular bisector of PR, then that means it's going to form a right angle with PR and it's going to bisect PR, right? Cuts it into two congruent parts. And then PR is the perpendicular bisector of SQ, so it forms right angle. It also bisects, so that means it cuts SQ into two congruent parts. Um, and then the last thing is triangle RMS is isosceles. So if triangle RMS is isosceles, so right here, then we know that SM and MR are the same, which means all four of those are the same. And we're trying to prove that this is a square. So the first thing we're going to do is write in our givens, which you guys can obviously do that. Okay. And then the second step, um, the perpendicular, let's start with that. So what we know is that um, angle PMS is, that's funny, PMS, is a right angle. Um, and really you could have picked any of these angles. If one is right, they're all right. Um, so I'm just going to say angle PMS is a right angle. And that would be our definition of perpendicular lines. And then the bisect part is we know that segment PM is congruent to segment MR. And then also segment SM is congruent to segment MQ. And that's the definition of, oh, actually, I don't like to say that. You can say definition of bisect, but um, I like to say bisect means cut into two congruent parts. Okay, and then your last given was that it was an isosceles triangle, and so that means that segment SM is congruent to segment MR, and that's your definition of isosceles triangle, where you have two sides congruent. Okay. So now, um, we want to prove that this is a square. So remember, for it to be a square, we need to be able to say that it's a rhombus and a rectangle. And remember those characteristics that form a rhombus and a rectangle. A rhombus has um, perpendicular diagonals, right? And a rectangle has congruent diagonals. So we've already shown that the diagonals are perpendicular. Now, the question is, are the diagonals congruent? And obviously, from our picture, you can tell that they are because all four parts are the same. Um, but we have to bring in these diagonals. So we have to get PR in our proof, and we have to get SQ in our proof. So if you remember, um, that whole segment is made up of two parts. So PM plus MR is equal to PR, and then SM plus MQ is equal to SQ, and that is, if anybody remembers, segment addition postulate. So we needed to get those diagonals in there, so now we have them in there. So now we're going to need to do um, some more work before we can actually say that these two are congruent, which is where we're trying to go. So after that, so let's go back up to some of these things that we showed congruent. So remember, we've talked about this before. If you show something's congruent, the idea is, can you replace anywhere? And we said that SM and MR were the same, right? So let's go ahead and say segment PM is congruent to segment 
SM. And then let's replace here. Because those two are the same. So now we can say segment MR is congruent to segment MQ. Whoops. And that would be substitution. Okay. Now, I have this statement right here. And if I can get this statement here to look like this identically, is that a word? Identical, to be identical, then I will know PR and SQ are the same. So if you look at this, what can I replace PM with? Well, it's the same as SM. That's what we just said. So we're going to put SM plus what can I replace MR with? We just said it's equal to MQ because we already replaced it above. And that's equal to PR. And that's just substitution again. Okay. So now what we've shown is these look the exact same, right? So now what we can do is we can take these two and set them equal to each other. We're just substituting. If they, we're saying that they're equal to the same thing, then we can say PR is equal to SQ, again, by substitution. So we have a lot of substitution in this problem. The whole point being we're trying to show diagonals are congruent. So we showed that the diagonals are congruent here, which was a must, and we showed that the diagonals were perpendicular or formed right angles, which we needed to do. So that's enough information, and now we can say PQRS is a square, and we'll just say definition of square. Or if you wanted to, you could even say the diagonals are congruent and perpendicular, which is a square. Okay, so that's your proof on that one. Let's go down to this next example. Um, you might want to really look at the board on this because it's going to um, allude to colors and you can't see those colors because you have a black and white copy. So it says Kathy is designing a quilt with blocks like the one shown. If she marks the diagonals of each yellow piece and determines that each pair of diagonals is perpendicular, can she conclude that each yellow piece is a rhombus? So we're talking about um, these yellow pieces right in here and we're saying, okay, if she puts diagonals in here and she determines that those diagonals are perpendicular, is that enough information to say that that is a rhombus? And the answer to this is no. And the reason is just because the diagonals are perpendicular doesn't mean anything, okay? So we don't know that the sides are congruent, which is what we need for a um, rhombus. And we also don't know that it's even a parallelogram. That's another key to this. We, we don't know anything about it as far as is it a parallelogram. We just know diagonals are perpendicular. And that's not enough information um, because we don't know if it's a parallelogram. So let's write that down. So when you're testing, so if you go back to that um, theorem 617, if the diagonals of a parallelogram are perpendicular, then you can conclude it's a rhombus, but you have to know that it's a parallelogram first. Okay, then on B it says if all four angles of the green piece have the same measure and the bottom and left um, sides have the same measure, can she conclude that the green piece is a square? So if all four angles are the same, then this is a quadrilateral. We already know it's a quadrilateral. If all four are the same, in a quadrilateral the sum is 360. So if they're all the four the same, then they all four would have to be right angles, right? Okay, so that's the first part. And then it says if the bottom and left sides have the same measure, so the bottom and the left, okay? So in this case, 
we know the slopes are perpendicular to each other, which means you do have parallel lines here. And then we have two consecutive sides that are congruent. So remember when it was two consecutive sides that are congruent, that means that it's a rhombus. Four right angles makes it a rectangle. And a rhombus and a rectangle would be a square. So is this a square? The answer is yes. And then we're going to explain. So if all four angles are equal, they have to be right. That's what we just said at the very beginning. And if two consecutive sides are congruent, then it's a rhombus. And I guess up here we should say um, if all four angles are equal, they have to be right. And that's a rectangle. And then we can just say a rhombus and rectangle is a square. And there's our explanation. Okay, and then the last piece here that we're going to do is, again, coordinate geometry. We're going to determine whether parallelograms, this time they've told us it's a parallelogram, so you don't have to do any proving to make sure that it is. Determine whether parallelogram JKLM with the following vertices is a rhombus, a rectangle, or a square, and we're going to list all that apply. And I've already drawn it for us, so we don't have to do that. Um, so we're going to check each one. So the first thing we're going to do is check and see is this a rhombus or not? And something specific to a rhombus is that all four sides are congruent, okay? So we could do the distance formula and check all four sides. That's a little more work than looking at the diagonals. So if you recall, if it's a rhombus, um, then the diagonals would be perpendicular, and that's a little easier. So I'm gonna go that route because I only have to check two things um, to determine if my diagonals are perpendicular. So I'm just gonna go ahead and draw in my diagonals in this picture. So I have diagonal JL and I have diagonal KM. So if I want to determine if those are perpendicular or not, I need to look at their slope. So the slope of KM, and if you wanted to, you could just count. So I go down one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, oh wait, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then over two. So down eight and over two is a slope of negative four. And then I'm going to look at the slope of JL. So JL, I would go up one, two, three, four, and over one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen up 4 and over 16, which reduces to 1 fourth. So if you look here, those are opposite reciprocals of each other. So the diagonals are perpendicular. So it is a rhombus. So we're going to mark that. Now we're going to check if it's a rectangle. And a rectangle has four right angles. So again, you could check the slopes of all four sides. That's a little more work than looking at the diagonals. Because when you do diagonals, you just have to look at two. So the key to a rectangle is that diagonals are congruent. So I'm going to do the distance formula to see what the length of these diagonals are. So when you do the distance from K to M, you would get 4 plus 64, which would be six square root whoops, of 68. And then the length of JL would be the square root of, if you did this, and subtracted and squared, 256 plus 16, which is the square root of 272. And so these are not congruent to each other, so it cannot be a rectangle. And so then that last piece, is it a square? We know the answer is no, because it can only be a square if it is a rhombus and a rectangle. Um, so in this case, we would just say 
that it's a rhombus and the diagonals are perpendicular but not congruent. And that would be our final answer. In your homework for 6-5, you're going to do 8 through 14 evens, 18 through 30 evens, and then number 46.